Hello everyone, I am Dr. Juma Bishwas. I am the mentor of MRCUG Health. Today I will present one of the very important topic of clinical governance, that is risk management. Before discussing about the risk management, I want to uh, request you to subscribe to my channel and press the bell button so that you can get updated. And if you like the video, please share with everyone so that everyone can get help from this video. So let's start with the topic. So you know that clinical governance is a very important tool for improvement of practice in healthcare system. And it has seven pillars of clinical governance. So you can see the pillars are clinical audit, clinical effectiveness, risk management, use of information, education and training, staffing, staff management, client career experience and involvement. So you can see the risk management is one of the pillar, pillar of clinical governance. So what is risk management? So risk management, easily if you need to understand, that the thing is, if you see that any unwanted or any complicated events happen in the hospital, in that situation, they need to investigate that matter. They need to identify what the issues over there, and then they will find out the uh, like a problem uh, behind that and a solution behind that and they will disperse that matter to the other stakeholder so that everyone can get aware about that and they will prevent it for the future. So that's the main aim of the risk management for improvement of quality of care and also reduce the litigation and patient complaints. So these are the steps you need to follow if you do the risk management. So first thing is that you have to identify the risks. That means what's the, uh, uh, what the incidents you need to uh, investigate. That's the first thing you have to identify. That is called risk identification. That is what could go or went wrong. You have to identify that first. And then you have to analyze the risk and evaluate that. That is, what are the chances of it going wrong and what would be the impact? That means what the incidence, whether it is a very common incidence, whether it is a very rare incidence, you have to identify that. Then you have to assess the risk. That is called risk scoring, whether it is a very serious risk, whether it is a moderate risk, whether it is a no harm risk, whether it is a low risk. So you have to identify, analyze the risk over there. And then you have to find out the problem behind that and what are the solution of that? So that is called risk treatment. So what can we do to minimize the chance of this happening or to mitigate damage when it has gone wrong? And lastly, when you identify the solution behind the problem, then you have to share with the other stakeholder so that they can aware of that and they can learn from that so that you can prevent these incidents in future. So that is called risk control. So what can we learn from things that have gone wrong? So the first is risk identification. Second is risk analysis and evaluation. Third is risk treatment. And the last one is risk control. So the first question is that how we can identify the risk? What are the sources for identifications of risk? So there are internal sources, there are external sources. So in internal source, you can identify the risk from your clinical areas. That can be work, that can be clinics, that can be theater, that can be delivery suit, that can be day assessment unit. Or you can also identify the issues from incident reporting. Also, you can identify the issue from complaints and claims staff consultations like workshops, survey interviews, and also from clinical audits. From external sources, you can identify from national confidential inquiries, CNST standard, from RCUG guidelines or protocols or visitation, from national patient safety agency alert, postgraduate dean specialty site visit, and CQC, that is care quality, Commission. So these are the sources where you can identify the risk. The main important identification of the risk is the incident reporting. Incident reporting means that if any unwanted or any accidents or incidents happen 
and you're witness of that incident, you have to report that incident. Yeah, before that, there is a paper form of the incident they are following. Nowadays, we are using a, um, a, a data sheet that is on the computer that is an online system that is we call Datix. So previously we are using the paper form. Now we are using on data form. And these are the incidents where you need to fill up an incident form if you witnessed of that. So these are the incidents in the maternity that can be maternal, any incidents, fetal, neonatal or organizational incidents. And these are the incidents you have to report in Gaini. These are the clinical incidents and these are the organizational incidents. And there are also some events that shouldn't be happen in any means or any circumstances. These we term it as a never events. And these are the never events you need to uh, remember. So when you identify the risk that you need to investigate, then the uh, second thing is that you have to analyze the risk and you have to evaluate the risk. So regarding the analysis, you have to find out what is the severity of that risk. So you can see that this is the, uh, this is the marking we use for analysis. That is green mark is uh, negligible or minor risk. Amber is moderate risk. Red is now major or catastrophic risk. So you have to identify in which area your risk is, and then you have to identify what the likelihood ratio of that incidence, whether it is a very common incidence, whether it is a possible incidence, whether it is a very remote incidence, or it's a very unusual incidence. And based on that, you have to score it on the red, green, or amber reason. So that is the way we have to do the risk analysis and evaluation to identify how severe our incidence is and how common is our incident is. So this is the second steps we need to do. The third steps is that we have to investigate the incidents. So there are two ways we can investigate the incidents. One is root cause analysis and one is failure mood effect analysis. This is the both way we can identify the risk. So here you can see in the root cause analysis, what we do, we will firstly identify the issue we need to investigate. We will select a member of investigation team. We gather the data from record interview on the protocol. Then we will determine the chronology of the incidents. And then we identify what's the problem on the care and what are the contributing of the factors over there? And then we make an action plan. So when we do the root cause analysis, we do it through the fish bone model. So that means we will identify the factors and each step, like task factor, patient factor, team factor, or it might be the problem in the communication. So this is the way we do in a root cause analysis. Uh, another way we can also uh, identify the problem that is called failure mood and effect analysis. So what we do, we will examine the process in detail and we outline every steps over there. And then we identify the way of uh, in which any of the steps might go wrong and what are the consequences each, if each steps might go wrong and what are the contributing factors and then what are the likelihood ratios of that contributing factor? How severe of that consequences? We have to score that. And then what are the existing control is present in our uh, system? And then we will prioritize the risk. We decide which risk we need to accept and which risk we need to treat. And based on that, we make an action plan. So this is the steps of um, uh, analysis of the risk that is called failure mood and effect analysis. So the one step is root cause analysis. This is the most commonest way we do the analysis. And the second is the failure mood and effect analysis. Okay, so this is the second step we do. The third steps we do. And the last steps is that when we identify the risk and their treatment, then we will disperse that matter to the to our stakeholder. We can arrange a meeting for that. We can send an email to them. 
um we can um, like discuss that matter in in any kind of uh, uh mdt discussions or any kind of uh joint care discussion we discuss that matter so that every can get learn from that everyone get aware of that and that will prevent these incidents in future so this is the easiest way you can do the risk assessment so always remember first you have to identify the issue what you need to investigate then you have to do the risk analysis and evaluation then you have to identify the problem behind that and what are the solution that is risk treatment and then you have to disperse that matter to your stakeholder to prevent it in the future that is called risk control so these are the four steps of risk management so in each department there is a risk register where they document each risk they investigate they also um, divided it uh, based on these four steps like identification of the risk analysis and evaluation risk treatment and risk control and then every weekly they discuss it in the risk management meeting so that everyone can get aware of that everyone can get learn from that and that help them to prevent it in the future and the main aim of the risk management is that to prevent uh, uh, to improve the quality of the care and also prevent any litigations and also prevent any kind of patient complaints so this is the easiest way uh, you can understand the risk management um so thank you everyone for listening my today's video if you are um, happy and if you have any queries in that case you can uh, ask me in the comment box and please share my video to others so that others can get help from these uh, videos and also subscribe my channel and press the bell button to get updated of uh, the recent videos thank you stay safe